bonding, bridging, load balancing, three different ways to combine internet connections together, but they all do really different things. Now, I think a lot of people are really unclear on when you use which one. So which is the right one for you? Brian, let's start with load balancing. What the heck is load balancing? So load balancing is when you have a few different interconnections available to you and you take different flows of traffic and you put them over the different internet connections you have. So what do you mean by flow traffic? So flow traffic might be like your upload stream for a video or your download stream from YouTube or checking your email. Those are all different flows of traffic. And so with load balancing, you can take those flows and you can put them over the different internet connections. Right. But once you put one there, it's stuck. There. Exactly. It's stuck. Right. So if that internet connection goes out, whatever you're doing, that download is broken. Yes. And you have to click the link yep. again. And that download's not going to be any faster than that one connection is available. I mean, yeah. I mean, if you have a lot of downloads going at the same time, you you could spread, yeah, spread them out. Yes. Right, right, right. Yep. Got it, got it, got it, got it. So how does that compare to channel bonding? So channel bonding, you still have a few internet connections available to you, but you can actually take those flows of traffic and you can sort of cut them up into their, you know, all the pieces that make them up and you can spread those I think out. you can say packets. <laughs> packets, yes. <laughs> packets. So you take those flows and you take all the packets that make those flows up and you can spread those out over the connections. So you can take one download stream and you can put it over a bunch of internet connections and actually get it faster and more reliable. Ah, so that's much better then. <laughs> yes. Yep. So what's the downside to, to channel bonding? So the downside of channel bonding is you need something on the other side of it to put that back together again. And so right, at right. Speedify, we have servers out in the cloud that do that for you, where with load balancing, you know, they go out over that connections and they just they hit the internet. So there's no, you don't need this piece out of the internet to right. put them all together again. So, yeah, I know that the issue is that any flow on the internet, it's defined by, you know, a protocol, two IP addresses and two port numbers. So if you ever change internet connections, you get a new IP address. And that's why, you know, something like load balancing, you can never move it from one connection to another. Right. And that's why we need the server in Speedify. Yes. You're really using that server's IP address the whole time. And that's how we're able to change you from connection to connection without the apps ever seeing a new IP address. Exactly. Right. To, to things on the internet, you will look like your server IP. And even though you may have a bunch of connections that change, Speedify can sort, sort that out. And so everything on the internet, you look like the server IP. So the, the third way to combine internet connections is network bridging. Right. That's we, a little different. You, you want to explain that? Right. So we get a lot of people coming in wondering how bridging compares to these things. And so bridging is taking two different networks and essentially just connecting them together. So if you have two Wi-Fi networks or a Wi-Fi network and an Ethernet network or two Ethernet networks, um, you can use bridging so that the devices on one can talk to all the devices on the other. Right. Well, you mean local networks. Local networks. Exactly. It's not about internet connections. Correct. Yep. Right. And so I know my router, I can plug into with Ethernet or I can join the Wi-Fi hotspot. Either way, you know, I, I can print to the printer. Is that what we're talking about? Here? Exactly. So the router in that case is bridging all those Ethernet ports with the Wi-Fi network. So you know, your your desktop plugged in over Ethernet can talk just fine to your TV that's connected over Wi-Fi. Those networks are bridged, and so there's no you know combining multiple internet connections and things like that. You're you're really just letting devices on one network talk directly to devices on another. Yeah. So I think a lot of us are using bridging every day without even thinking about it, right? Exactly. Yep. It's just you know the same network, right? I'm joining the, the my router and right? join its hotspot. I plug into its Ethernet on, on its network. Exactly. That's totally hidden from us, that it's two different networks that are bridged. I think for a lot of people that um, have experimented a little bit with Linux networking or something, bridging is such a core thing of how do I make this thing do something interesting. A lot of times you want to combine networks and bridging is a thing to do. So I think it's sort of on, on people's mind that bridging is how you combine networks, but it's different from bonding. And So we also have people show up sometimes and claim that you know Linux can do bonding. So there's some sort of bonding built into Linux. You want to talk about that? For yes. A so there, there has been bonding built into Linux forever, and it is super interesting if you have fast computers connected you know, nearby where you can run a bunch of Ethernet cables that are all exactly the same. Exactly. Like, let, let's emphasize yes. that. Exactly the same. The exact same speed, the exact same latency, and no loss. Right. Right. <laughs> right. Like, yep. I get, like, literally... Two wires running between your computers. Exactly. So if you, you could run, you know, four Ethernet cables from one computer to another, and you could set them all up with round robin, um, and you'll get pretty close to four gigabit. If you know each of those is, is a gigabit, they combine up pretty nicely. It'll it'll sort of put packets over each. Most of those bonding drivers are smart enough that if one of those cables fails, 
it will nicely detect that that link is broken and just use the three. But if you find yourself in a situation where there are different speeds, it really sort of falls apart. Yeah, it's not yeah. really. So there's a lot of complexity in Speedify. Yeah, to deal with that internet connections can have different speeds, they can have different latencies, they can have different losses, they can get unplugged, they can get replugged. Right. And those, the real world internet is a terrifying place. Exactly. <laughs> and and the, the conditions of those networks can change so quickly over time that that's another, I mean. Oh yeah, you're, you're dealing with wireless <laughs> networks. You walk around, <laughs> start off next to your Wi-Fi hotspot and just walk away from it, just straight away from it, right? You, yeah. The bandwidth just drops every single second. Yeah, and so the Linux Linux bonding stuff just isn't really designed with that in mind at all. Um, yeah, sometimes I laugh, right? Version 1.0 of Speedify, where every time it connected, it ran a speed test to find out how fast the internet connection was. It didn't work, you know, you, you walk around and five minutes later, everything's completely different. That speed test didn't help us. Yeah, exactly. So how do we figure out how fast so, the connection So uh, we look at every packet that goes across. We measure a bunch of things like how long did it take and how long did it take compared to previous. So we can get some indicators of when the networks start to get congested and we get some feeling of, you know, are we starting to put too much traffic over that network. And that can change a lot. You know, you're talking 5G, maybe that goes from that max speed is five megabits now and in 10 seconds, it might be 300 megabits. So that can change a lot. So we need to be able to adjust quickly. But the main thing there is sort of detecting this congestion and being able to back off and, you know, route packets to other networks that maybe are congested. Yeah, that's another from A couple of years ago, people were saying when 5G comes out, we won't need Speedify anymore. <laughs> and it turns out that 5G makes you need Speedify more because it's more variable. Yeah. You stay on one spot, it's 500 megabits. You walk a few feet away, and now it's one megabit. <laughs> it's such craziness. You need Speedify in the middle to, you know, fix things up for you so you have working internet. Absolutely, yeah. The 5G seems to sort of spread that range out where a lot of times, you know, speed feels about the same as it was on 4G. And sometimes it's three times faster than you ever saw with 4G. And it's, yeah, kind of all over the place still. So, Absolutely. Now we're going to get into how you can use these technologies to improve your internet connectivity. But before we do, hit that subscribe button so you see all of our latest videos when they come out. So if somebody wants to do channel bonding, what should they do? Easiest way to start channel bonding is to download Speedify. Install Speedify. It's available for iOS, Android, Mac, Windows, uh, Linux. So that's the easiest way to get going. It's a little tough to get into otherwise because you really need the component you know, at the device where you have the multiple internet connections and you need something on the internet to be able to combine them. So by far the easiest way to get into it is to uh, start using Speedify. So we've been talking about how you can bond all of the internet connections on your computer or your phone together to get you faster, more reliable internet with channel bonding. Is there any way to bond like, you know, the cellular off other people's cell phones? <laughs> yes, so with Speedify, we recently added a feature called Parent Share where Devices that are running Speedify that are near each other can kind of advertise to each other the internet connections that they have, and they can share over you know, their local networks. And actually, yes, so your you know your one phone can use its cell connection and the cell connection of the you know, other phones that are near it. Yeah, I, I've used that for live streaming, right? So I've got the, the one phone, and it's got its cellular, and it's doing live streaming. And then I can have you know, two other phones join its hotspot. And now I'm on AT&T, Verizon, and T-Mobile, all three carriers at the same time, walking around the city, live streaming, talking to people. It's pretty cool. Very cool. Yeah, and I think getting that coverage across multiple cell carriers is, is really important because it, it's, you know, especially in a city... You can find a spot where T-Mobile's great because you're right by a T-Mobile tower and got almost nothing from Verizon. I mean, that's, we see that all the time. So. so whether you're bonding or load balancing, how big a difference does it make to connect, say, Wi-Fi and Ethernet to the same internet connection? There isn't much advantage to doing that unless you don't trust one of those connections between you and, the, and your router. If your Ethernet always gets kicked out by the vacuum or something, then maybe having you know, some fail over there is good. But you know, if you trust your Ethernet and it never goes out, not much advantage to adding multiple paths to the same router. So what about if you have two cell phones on the same carrier? Does trying to bond their connections together, does that actually give you better performance? It depends. <laughs> so, That's what I've heard. I've heard very mixed things. Generally, yes. I mean, if you're in a situation where you're somewhere that's that's pretty busy and everybody's just has, you know, kind of like a megabit sort of thing because the tower is doing its best to serve everybody, then having a couple of those or three of those and combining them together, you may end up getting something that's three times as fast as what one device is capable of. If you're in a spot where everybody's getting 100 megabits and then you combine them all together and it's still 100 megabits, uh, maybe that's just all the tower can, can provide you. So 
if I take Speedify and I put, you know, 30 cell phones on the table, can I bond them all together? Yes. <laughs> Does it do me any good? <laughs> it depends. <laughs> so, so I think in practice, getting three decent connections combined to, to be something that's really rock solid and, and fast enough for anything you want to do is, is kind of the sweet spot. There are odd situations where people have a bunch of really slow connections. And then in that case, combining 10 or 12 or 15 of them actually works out great. But if you're combining a bunch of stuff that's, you know, somewhere between five and 20 megabits, combining 30 of those together, not going to do well as you think probably. Yeah. Yeah. You're probably running out of bandwidth in the air or they could interfere with each other or there's just so many things that can happen. Yep. Now that you know how bonding works, you're going to want to check out our other video on how to use pair and share to wirelessly combine even more cellular connections for the very most reliable internet you can get.